Not only does he take the one finger, and he takes it, does, it, does the whole KFC like, mwah, 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 and the, <laughs> ah, I'm going to throw up. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> it's the Sway Parade with Chuck Sway. Welcome into the Sway Parade. My name is Shuck Sway, and this ooh, ooh, is the parade. The promenade down the infinite street of peculiar news, country strong sports, and scrub clips from around the net. Thank you for joining me. And some things to look forward to this week. Scratch and lick, toad tasting, and Spider-Man gets country strong before we get into any of this i just want to take a time just a quick moment to let you know that we are always giving ourselves to the almighty algorithm that sorts all of the content that we see in our day-to-day -day lives what i need from you is to just take a quick second if you're listening on a podcast platform if you're watching on YouTube, whatever the platform demands as an offering to the almighty algorithm, go ahead and just do that. Leave a review, like it, subscribe it, turn on that bell notification because the almighty algorithm eats that up and the show thanks you for that. Now at the end of the show, as it is every single week, prayers to the almighty algorithm will be had. But before that, there's so much parade to do. Let's get right into it. First off, I need to remind everyone that there is a hotline that you can call anytime, day or night, 24-7. It is open, 818-275-SWAY, 7929, if you're trying to turn letters into numbers. No calls this week, but hey, that just means the hotline is Still wide open. Recap from last week. Michael called in asking, hey, have you ever tried brats and milkshake? I said no. I delivered. If you have a request for that, awesome. If you have a fighting question, we've had a few of those. Uh, just call it up. If you don't know what to say and you just want to free ball it, you can do that as well. All of the calls are not screened until the recording begins. So have some fun with it. Surprise me and hey, maybe even surprise yourself. Well, let's get into our first segment this week, which is the deep shot. Guns Look at that big old belly. Chuck, you're getting me restless. The deep shot. All right, top story in the deep shot, as it normally is something to do with the Buffalo Bills and in a wider sense, Buffalo, the city in Western New York is in a state of emergency right now, because as we navigate through this week, which uh, Thanksgiving, uh, happy Thanksgiving to every one of you. I am incredibly thankful for you taking the time to watch and listen. Uh, and so is the almighty algorithm giving thanks to that. That's what I'll be doing this Thursday. Thanksgiving plans in Buffalo may be a little bit different this year because the entire region is inundated with more snow than you can imagine. If you do not live in an area that gets snow and even with all that snow life must go on. Life uh, 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 finds a way. So right now, Buffalo is experiencing over six feet of snow. More snow than the average height of people in America and probably people in Buffalo as well. But the Buffalo Bills still have to play a game of football, but they're not going to be doing it in Buffalo. They actually have moved their game to Detroit. 
which is uh, geographically not that far away. Still right off of uh, the coast of the Great Lakes. So they get a lot of snow, too. But the people in Detroit are like, hey, this weather here in the wintertime, woo-wee, why don't we build an indoor stadium? And thankfully for the Buffalo Bills' sake, the Lions are out of town. So they're like, hey, just, you know, use our place to play your game. Oh, yeah. And then, by the way, after you're done playing the Browns on Thursday, just stay where you are. Get comfy. Show you the, the pleasantries of Detroit. Uh, you're going to go ahead and play the Lions on Thanksgiving Day. And that's exactly what is happening. Here is a video from the Buffalo Bills Stadium. Uh, What is it? Uh, It used to be New Era. I think it's Highmark now. Uh, Yeah, here's... Look at all this snow. You can hardly tell it's a stadium. This looks like a scene from the day after tomorrow. And it's just dumping snow. Dumping snow. Now, I cover the Buffalo Bills. I'm a Buffalo Bills fan. There's some lore with ever since Josh Allen came into the league, what, 2016, 2017. It's like, okay, I'm a, I'm a Buffalo guy. I'm even sporting the, the table smashing shirt today. I don't live in Buffalo. I'm almost as far away as you can be from Buffalo in the contiguous United States. And me personally, up here in the Pacific Northwest, we get some snow and even a little bit cripples our region. A lot of hills. It doesn't happen often enough for people to learn how to drive. It's really shitty. I can't imagine Living in an area where this is an occurrence, not a regular occurrence of this much snow, but where it's just, okay, you know, bye-bye summer, hello, white snow, I couldn't do it. I At some point, I do want to get out to Buffalo, see the town, try some wangs, but I'm not going to do it in the wintertime because that is nutty. Uh, The There's a driving ban. Like, think so much snow that the government says, yeah, you just can't drive. Wherever you're at, just hang out. Wait for it to blow over, I guess. And the National Weather Service office called the storm's potential, quote, crippling and paralyzing. It makes you think, and no dig to the fine folks in Buffalo. But if you know that this happens, what makes you stay? Where it's like, hey, Potentially once a year, multiple times a year, you're just going to be stuck at home. I mean, maybe the people of Buffalo were fortified at the beginning of the pandemic when orders came through, you know, shelter in place, stay indoors. Then the Buffalonians look outside and they're like, there's no snow. What what are we doing this for? It's like, I don't know. It's some, some, some cold, some disease. You might get sick. Just stay inside. It's like, okay, we're used to this. Uh, The storm also was blamed for two deaths already uh, for people stricken with cardiac events while clearing snow. There's so much snow to clear in Buffalo that it's killing people. They're going out shoveling driveways thinking, all right, just, you know, doing what I do here in Buffalo, clearing snow. And then they die because their heart's like, I can't take it anymore. There's too much. It just keeps falling. And then they croaked. And yeah, if there's a driving ban, ambulances, they they drive. But right now they're not driving to who is having cardiac events. So if you are out in Buffalo listening and enjoying, uh, snuggle up with the Sway Parade and uh, be safe out there. There's also another clip. Uh of of the snow who would have thought it done guessed it blowing falling i mean it it looks like ooh, and i pause it at the perfect time if you're watching on youtube if you're not watching on youtube you can go to the patreon free access to that part of the patreon page uh has all the sources of everything in the episode that you can take a look at but uh it it looks like it's just pissing snow sideways and i don't even think because snow obviously is frozen water typically don't 
piss frozen piss. I don't know what the proper term would be for snow that is just, I don't even know, just juicing, icing sideways. It's it's something I have never seen before. And I hope to never experience in person. But it's blown oh sideways. God. And then, ka oh my god! a lightning strike. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. So when I saw this, I thought, well, that don't make a lick of sense. When it snows, it's usually cold out. You get a lot of snow. Where the Where's the lightning coming from? Well, I had to do some research. Uh, what would that be? Meteorolo meteor meteorologically? Yeah, the weather stuff. Uh, why this is happening. It's called the lake effect. If you're not familiar with that, obviously Buffalo being right on the shores of Lake Erie and just south of the great white north of Canada, where I don't even see any reports of up in Canada. Canada just might be gone for the winter. Come back in the spring when the people thaw out. I don't know how much snow they got, but weather pattern comes up or comes down from Canada. Real nice and cold, real Canadian, polite still, but crippling and paralyzing as the National Weather Service has said. And when that goes over the lake, the lake is a little warmer. I mean, you think about it. We've only we're not even in a winter yet. We're still a month out from officially being winter. So the lake is still a little warmer. 50 degrees of the water, cold air is coming down. That front just looks down at Lake Erie and starts rubbing its nipples. And it's like, ooh, you are moist, aren't you? <laughs> and then it starts sucking up all of that hot lake moisture, that eerie moisture. And just builds this massive snow system. And so typically, look at me, I feel like a, a weatherman right now. Typically, when you have cold on top, warm on bottom, you're going to get some lightning. So not only crippling and paralyzing snow in Buffalo, lightning strikes as well and people dying from trying to shovel snow. So again, if you're out in Buffalo, if you're planning on going to Buffalo for the holiday weekend, uh, just don't. Just wait. It'll clear out eventually, maybe. Uh, not a whole lot of sports there. I mean, the Bills, right? I'm recording this before they even play their first game at Ford Field in Detroit. So hopefully they uh, they get <laughs> they get their shit figured out because they've been struggling lately. Uh, that game against the Vikings, probably the game of the year if you watched it. For the Buffalo fans, yeah, sure, it's a game of the year, but uh, would have been nice for the Bills to come out on top. And speaking of coming out on top, actually doesn't really refer to anything, but <laughs> the transition here is... Uh, I'm going to roll it, and then we'll talk about it. Playing in the paint. Right. He knows he oh, can't get out. Oh, man. Oh, oh, man. So y'all thought that was great D. I thought that was just ripping him. <laughs> I think well, you came it, it, it could have went either way. Yeah, I think it you should have called the police on that. Right. So as a producer, a creator of, of podcasts, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't consume – other podcasts. And so I have, I have what I have in my rotation. And what I've noticed in these shows is that the word that you heard bleeped out, uh, is pretty much accepted as you just don't say it anymore. So, um, uh, what you just heard in the clip, it was, uh, bleepity bleeped out because it's, uh, it's a bad word. It's when you put two and two together, if you watch the clip or, uh, or listen, gather the uh, the context. Uh, it is an act of unwanted sexual acts. There's your definition for that. Their word. Um. There's a time and place, I guess, for for saying it, not for doing it. Do not get me wrong. There. There's a time and place for saying it in referencing it. I don't think that it is during the broadcast of an NBA game. This is uh, Tim Hardaway Sr. calling the Warriors, playing the Spurs. And if we run this back again, Steph Curry tries to shoot a three, gets fouled. And Tim Hardaway Sr., 
instead is like, oh, he fouled. He's going to go to the line now, shoot some free throws. He's like, that's not trying to defend a shot. That's ah, bah, 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 him. Uh, <laughs> poor choice of words on Tim Hardaway Sr.'s part. So y'all thought that was great. D. I thought that was just. And uh, I mean, there are some uh, we've we've covered multiple flub ups of commentators, you know, saying stuff that really is out of context. And the, they've all come from this Twitter account uh, at no context. Tanner sports announcers with no context. That's the name of the account. Uh, and for the most part, it's like, you know, he starts to come and then he pulls out, you know, that kind of Troy Aikman stuff. Never have I heard a term like this used in in commentary and probably won't again. Now, I don't have the quick apology turnaround. You know, they probably went to commercial break. They put Tim Hardaway Sr. right in the center. And he's like, hey, I realize that I said some stuff that, you know, might not have have gone over too well. It reminds me. Gosh, this was a few years ago now. Uh, NBA still. Uh, Russell Westbrook, I think he was still with the Thunder. Um, if you're familiar with his game, explosive, quick to the rim, has some a repertoire of nasty dunks throughout his career. And the commentator to that game, you know, Russ drives down the lane, dunks it down, or makes some crazy layup, whatever happens. The commentator to that game said Russ was, uh, quote, out of his cotton pick in mind. Also, <laughs> what? So, uh, you know, you just got to be careful for what you say, especially when there's a microphone right in front of your face and it being recorded and the almighty algorithm listening to it all. I've, I'm actually, I've thought about this before because uh, now uh, this is episode 37 uh, it's about, actually I have a clock here because I am counting down to 69 total hours of Sway Parade. Uh, there is about 40 hours of this show thus far. And it's kind of a wait, fuck around and find out to see if I've said anything so far or in the future that someone's going to take and be like, whoa. Whoa. What are you talking about here? Uh, we shall see. But here's what I can kind of fall on. That goes against what I'm trying to get from the almighty algorithm is I'm not broadcasting to millions of people during a sporting event. It's just a little corner, a little corner of the podcasting world. And here's this weight parade. If anything's said problematic, uh, I don't know. Hey, hey, if you find something cancelable, I just want to request this first. You find it and you think, oh, I'm going to expose this goober. Uh, just reach out to me. Give me a chance to defend myself. But, oh, no, no. This is what I meant. Because everything out of context is cancelable. Uh, moving on here. Um, there sports. This was actually in the news. I was torn on if I wanted to throw it in the news segment or here in the deep shot. But I figured, hey, this is a sport. It's marathon running, but it's not just any sort of marathon running. It's marathon running while smoking cigarettes. Yes, a Chinese man who is 50 years old ran an entire marathon. What was it? 23.2 miles, however long. Uh, all while smoking cigarettes the entire time, not just like a pick me up at the beginning and a celebratory one at the end. The entire 20, however many miles. He's just puffing cigs and he ran it in under 3.5 hours, which uh, any, any time under 12 hours for a marathon is impressive. Uh, quick sidebar. Cause I know there are a few people listening um, that are a part of just a small little get together half marathon that everyone else has been training for. Uh, here's an update for you, just for you. You know who you are. Um, I'm still, <laughs> it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I will probably finish in a time as if I were smoking cigarettes the whole time, but I won't be. But anyways, let's learn more about this cigarette smoking runner. Uh, 
He goes by the nickname Uncle Chen, and he ran in the Xin Ajang Marathon. It's Chinese, I apologize. Uh, three hours and 28 minutes while chain smoking cigarettes. There's actually an image. Here he is. Here's Uncle Chen. As he's running, lighting cigarettes, smoking cigarettes, and I guess just doing what he does. Uh, after the race, photos of Uncle Chen chain smoking surfaced on Chinese social media app Weibo. And they have since gone viral outside of Weibo because I'm not viewing it on Weibo. I'm viewing it on Twitter, which that's a whole thing in and of itself. Uh, we all might be losing a valuable source of news and entertainment if uh, Twitter takes a dump. But it's not important right now. What's important is why the hell is this guy running marathons with cigarettes? Uh, when people online began questioning the legitimacy of accomplishment, marathon organizer shared his finishing certificate. He miraculously finished 574th, three hours and 28 minutes, 45 seconds, out of a group of nearly 1,500 competitors. So he was just outside of the top third. Two thirds of runners behind him that aren't smoking cigarettes lost to this guy. How do you think you'd feel in a situation like that? This is not the first time that Uncle Chen, who is 50, has gained notoriety, notoriety, pardon me, for smoking while competing in a race. This is kind of his thing. This is his brand. <laughs> I'm the smoking marathon runner. Uh, Uncle Chen was also photographed running the 2018 Guangzhou Marathon and the 2019 Zymen Marathon while smoking cigarettes. He turned in a time of three hours and 36 minutes at the first one. And at the second one, uh, three hours and 32 minutes. So this most recent one, three hours and 28 minutes, that's a PR. And I think, too, it didn't mention it, and I didn't look into it, but he might be a world record holder, the fastest marathon while continuously smoking cigarettes, something to be really proud about. Uh, while some users on Weibo were frustrated that Uncle Chen was permitted to smoke while competing in the marathon, there are no rules that state runners can't smoke while competing. And it might be one of those things where they just go ahead and rewrite the rules because enough people will complain. Or because in my experience uh, with interacting with and just seeing Chinese people, they love cigarettes. They absolutely love them. When I was in college, the little smoking areas outside of campus were filled with Chinese uh, international students just sucking away. None of them were running a marathon, but this doesn't surprise me. What I do want to surprise me, though, is getting country strong. Let's see what we have on tap for this week. Play the week. And I'm gonna suit up here, bring out Country Strong Cloud, and how to do there, parade listeners. Back again for another Country Strong Play of the Week. And oh boy, am I excited for this one. Let's, let's just take a look. It's, it's, it's Spider Man. Spider Man at the rodeo, and that is country strong. Get <laughs> okay, look at this guy. He's been he's taking the Spider Man costume to the absolute limits of those threads. They are holding on for dear life, trying not to rip. And they just a little spider side wide claw. We're the crawling on the wall at the rodeo. You can tell it's a rodeo because you can see. I mean, I'm no stranger to rodeo, so I know exactly what this looks like. You can tell because you got the dirt, you got the Coors Light banner, uh, and you got the gates. And those gates are where they release the balls, where they release the horses, where they do all their rodeo stuff. Pretty typical at a rodeo. For you to see balls, uh, I think the steers, right, because they ain't got nuts or just whatever the term has been a while since I've been to a rodeo. And um, then you got the barrel racing on the horses. You got, uh, it's a rodeo. You know what happens there, but what you don't know what happens is you're just sitting there watching the rodeo. Be like, golly, I sure do love myself a good rodeo. And then Spider Man, country strong Spider Man, comes out of nowhere, runs across the dirt, 
finds a gate and hangs on it like the spidey man that he is. This is this is Coach Strong undeniably, but it's a superhero. This is an Avenger that's at the rodeo. Who would have thought and that is Coach Strong indeed? Ooh-wee. Thank you, Clyde. It's a quick one here. Really, really gassed up about Spidey at the rodeo, and I am too. That's a fantastic clip. And that's going to do it for the deep shot. But we still have other segments. And the next one being scrubbing some clips. Scrub my clip. Now it's time. The portion of the show where we just, uh, as the intro song alludes to, scrub clips. Uh, no rhyme or reason, just clips that are out there on the web. And if you find any of them in your browsing on the Instagrams, on the TikToks, on the Twitters for maybe just a little bit longer, send them my way at Chuck underscore sway on all those platforms. You can even send in an email. I'm him at chucksway.com. First clip was shared by the ever lovely Mrs. Sway. And take a look at what she thought was parade worthy. And it most definitely is. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Living on a farm is not as peaceful as people think. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so for the listeners, let me break it down for you. There's a goat standing there, and then there's another goat behind it. The goat behind it, I don't know if this is just goat genetics or in a time of of a goat being hot and bothered, the tongue is just sticking out. And its nose and tongue are right on the ass and genitals, as the anatomy of a goat goes, right there. And it's... (laughs) Trying to eat some goat booty. (laughs) Listen to it. Oh, it's just standing there after it, after it did its, I don't know, uh, mating dance. I'm going to loop it back again. Living on a farm is not as peaceful as people think. Who thinks living on a farm is peaceful? It's organized chaos. You have a bunch of animals just running around, eating ass, taking shits, and and eating normal food, too. But, I mean, that goat is... Trying to get that goat booty. Do you. Next clip. Proud of you, Gavin. Thank you. Go conquer the world. Remember who you belong to. The Most High Jesus Christ. That's right. So... Again, if you're listening, uh, this is a, uh, a young lad leaving his house. Uh, mom, I guess, has to, I, I don't know if this is a first day of school or what. Mom has to get the camera out as he's on his way. He's got his backpack. I'm assuming he's going to school. And walking out to the car. Getting in. And mom is just taking this video. It didn't even sound like the car started. Um, In if there wasn't this question and response at the beginning of this video, it's kind of like, I want those 15 seconds back, but it's the question and the response that makes it this mom. uh, I don't know. Lisa Drudge. Let's see here on Instagram. Um, I mean, this is a, a buy the books mom account on Instagram. And, uh, you know, much like on f- Facebook, uh, they're just, hey, uh, got my follower base. I want my I want my friends to see what my kids are up to. And they just 
take videos documenting their kids. But again, going back to this question, the response. Okay, here comes the AU stud man. Hold on. <laughs> oh my goodness, excuse me. Proud of you, Gavin. Thank you. Go conquer the world. Remember who you belong to. The most high Jesus Christ. That's right. So, just a reminder, mom needs to remind, what is it, Gavin, uh, who he belongs to. Because with these cargo shorts and tucked in off orange polo, mama might be a little concerned that when Gavin gets to school, he's going to be just drowning in pussy, I guess. I don't know. So as a friendly reminder from mama, remember who you belong to. And without missing a beat, you heard it. He turns around. The most high Jesus Christ. And guess what? You know what the most high Jesus Christ doesn't condone? Swimming in pussy. You got to play by the rules here. So uh, I don't know if this is a an everyday thing or if this is just, I'm going to show you Gavin going to school. Oh, yeah, okay. The plot thickens here. Here's the caption. Should have read it. Uh, go get him. Our young men's man's first young men's first week. It's riddled with errors. It should be the most high of education and, and grammar and spelling. But anyways, uh, first week of classes at Clemson and AU. I don't know where AU is, but a proud mama. So this isn't just going off to high school. And he'll be back a little later. He's, I guess, leaving for college with a backpack and a little briefcase on the side. Uh, I think he still goes home at night, but still. Mama Lisa knows, hey, he's going to college. That's where all the sex and sin happens. So just remember who you belong to. The Most High, Jesus Christ. You got to keep your morals in order take a look at this next clip this one was submitted by caleb standing in line at a fast food eatery <laughs> you know what's really funny is i see these clips right before they get put into the show oh and i mean even dating back to what the third episode of this show with the baboon that splooges and then starts, you know, cleaning up with his mouth. I watched that beforehand and I'm like, Ooh, this is parade material. And then once I don't, the cameras and lights, they get rolling and going and I think I'm fine. And then I see it again and I just, I it's, it's gag full. So this guy is waiting. Oh God. Am I going to lose another contact? This guy is waiting in line. I don't even want to look at the screen right now. Oh, this guy's waiting in line at some fast food eatery. I oh, fuck waiting in line at a fast food eatery. And he's <coughs> digging into the side of his pants on the hip. <laughs> While he's waiting to order, waiting for his order, I don't know. Oh, I didn't have anything to eat this morning, so hopefully there's nothing to come up. I'm getting queasy. I mean, he's just digging. I mean, everyone has a hip itch from time to time. And what's really nice when you're wearing sweats or anything that uh, has some sort of elastic band with like a drawstring and I do it quite frequently too, is I just put, instead of putting my hands in my pockets, I just put them down on, on my hip, like just I'm holding my hip. And then if there's a little itch, it just looks like my hands are in my pockets. I scratch. So this guy is just seemingly just has a little scratch. And he's digging it there and he's looking around. Um, I mean, there's people in this, in this line at this fast food eatery. Uh, it's not just by himself. He's, I mean, he's got these two ladies right in front of him, like two feet in front of him. This other guy, like another three feet away from him. Uh, and he's just going for a scratch. Now, here's the thing. When you, when you got an itch to scratch, scratch it. Uh, I mean, even us guys, right? We know the tricks to kind of 
stagger our legs and put our hands in our pockets and take our nut sack and pull it away from our leg. I mean, it happens. You got to be subtle about it. But other scratches, right? You get a scratch on your face and you just, you know, kind of scratch it off. The hip seems like a a fairly acceptable space to scratch in public. Now, when you have half of your forearm down in your pants <laughs> and you're scratching as it's more, it's a little bit more on the aggressive side, but still um, you're scratching. Make it quick though. This guy doesn't make it quick. <laughs> he pulls his hand out of his pants. Oh my god! <laughs> I can't even look. I can't even look. I can't even look. He, he, okay, that, my eyes are shut. He pulls his hand out of his pants, uh, and he to figure out like he's good. I don't know if he's at a KFC. <laughs> <laughs> But he, uh, uh, but he, uh, he that takes it just. <laughs> just gives a little taste of whatever was on his hip. Oh, oh my God. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Not only does he take the one finger and he takes it, it does the whole KFC like mwah, 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 and the, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Fuck. Last, the last one. And if, if you're watching on YouTube, you can gag with me. <laughs> the last one, he just takes this thing. Super, he sucks. Oh my god! Oh my god! I don't even know. It's just, I think it is the imagination of whatever might be on his hip, some sort of growth or open wound. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's the mystery. <laughs> It's the mystery of what might be down there that is really fucking with me right now. Oh, my God. Oh, I need to get out of this. Are we done? Oh, and then he, he turns away at the very end. Like, oh, I don't even want to see this after I've just done the old one, two, three, four, five on his fingers. Oh, oh, my God. Is it over? Okay, it's over. It looped. I'm not doing that again. Uh, I'm legitimately gagging and almost throwing up. Oh, oh, give me one second. I need to compose myself. I don't want to lose another contact. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 oh. Scrub my clip, ladies and gentlemen. And how, I mean, think about it. That's not even the moistest clip. What else do we have here? Oh, we have a turtle. Dropping a log. Like that is a human sized shit coming out of a turtle. And instead of letting this turtle shit in peace, or is it a, is it a, a, a tortoise? Either way, instead of letting him shit in peace, there's a little sample shovel right below his bee hole. I guess they want to examine it and see how turtly his shit is. I could watch this all day long compared to the last clip. It's just turtle shit. I mean, you literally see farm to table type of situation. There's a bunch of lettuce surrounding this turtle, tortoise, whatever it is. That's pretty much what it's eating. And then just going through its little turtle guts and then out its pooper. That's that's easy. That's tame. I just didn't know that turtles, tortoises, these types of reptiles with shells took, I mean, I've laid logs that size. That's a big old shit. I just thought it was impressive. And staying on that theme, 
Oh. I'm going to grab some water really quick. Not because the next one is absolutely outrageous. To me, at least, I still, uh, I might not scratch my hip ever again. Uh, but anyways, the moistest clip. Take a look. This next clip hmm, is so moist. So we have a gorilla uh, also kind of scratching the side of its hip. Uh, more it looks like it's more reached around towards its pooper. Uh, so yeah, gorilla just pulls out. It's like multiple turds. Oh, and instead of looking at it, like, how did this get here? It's just going for a taste. Oh, <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe I'm going to get a little queasy on this one too. Uh, this gorilla just takes a fat shit in its hand. Kind of digging for it, making sure it gets all of it. And then one bites. It's dookie. Rinse and repeat. Sunrise, sunset. Oh. Oh my God. See, maybe because it's a gorilla and not a human, I'm like, yeah, like they're they're lesser beings. They're they're still intelligent, but they're not that intelligent. Like humans aren't putting their hands near their bums and giving it a taste and then, you know, think back to the clip just few minutes ago it's like oh wait no we're we're just as bad i don't know i guess you don't typically see gorillas in the line at a fast food eatery uh doing this. this is at the zoo like it's like literally just at its home the guy in that clip if he did that at home granted there probably wouldn't be a video of it and i think we are all better off if that were the case but if he did it at home whatever do whatever the fuck you want to do at home this gorilla is home at the zoo. It wants to take a shit in its hand and eat it by all means. But if that gorilla were in public, I'd be having the same same reaction, I think. Alrighty. That's that was a moist segment of uh, of scrubbing scrubbing them clips. Uh, we're gonna kind of cleanse the palate a little bit and just get into uh dosing some capitalism before we move on with the rest of the show. It's time for a dose of capitalism. Live, buy, consume, die. And as I do every week, I want to give props to the supporters of the show. Parade Plus Infinity. Shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyla. Every single week, you hear their names on the show. <clears throat> And you could hear your name as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier, that's where all the sources uh, that are on the show, if you want to see and save it on your own Instagram, the guy digging into his hip and giving it a yum, yum, yum taste, uh, you can do that on the Patreon. Uh, completely free. You don't have to pay to access those sources. But if you do want to pay, there's two tiers, Parade Plus and Parade Plus Infinity. Uh, comes with different perks. You know how Patreon works. I'm just letting you know, hey, take a look at mine. Take a look at the swipe rates. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Uh, if you're listening on any platform, it's going to be in the, the show notes down below. Uh, and if you're watching on YouTube, just check the video description. There's going to be a little bitly hyperlink. Click on it, shop around. Uh, Black Friday is this week not really any sale it's affordable i mean six dollars and ninety cents for the first tier could be five dollars but inflation and also the just you know we love the number 69 here and then fourteen dollars and 69 cents for the parade plus infinity either way they're not on sale but either way you can feel good that that money is going straight to the show goes to improve it goes to make shinier more larger drawing a blank on my words i'm still flustered by that guy digging on his head more extravagant more extravagant offerings to the almighty algorithm uh so yeah if you want to uh to help with that cause check out the patreon and 
Yeah, it's capitalism. Live by, consume, die. You know the drill. And last segment for this week, we got to check out whoop, the news. Yeah, what's the big deal, fella? It's just a little bit of news. First story. National Park Service begs visitors, please stop licking these psychedelic toads. Uh, and there's an image of these toads that I'll put up here. Night vision. If you're watching, does that look like a toad that wants to be licked? For any reason, psychedelic or not, I don't think so. Let's learn more about uh, what this story entails. Uh, it's a quote, as we say with most things you come across in a national park, whether it is a banana slug, unfamiliar mushroom, or a large toad with glowing eyes in the dead of the night, as we just saw in the photo, please refrain from licking. <clears throat> the agency wrote, this is the National, national Park Service, the warning posted on Facebook last week specifically applies to the Sonoran Desert Toad, a.k.a. the Colorado River Toad. These toads have prominent paratoid glands that secrete a potent toxin, and it can make you sick if you handle the frog or get the poison in your mouth. I think this was an episode of Family Guy way back when, where all the kids were licking toads and, and getting high. Uh, as a kid watching that show, I just thought, oh, it's just fun. It's family guy. It's funny. It's it's over the top. Like, who's licking a toad? Well, turns out you can actually lick a toad and get high. Uh, people seek it out anyway. The National Park Service says, hey, uh, these toads are toxic and dangerous. Don't lick them. And the people are like, fuck it. I pay taxes. I'm going to lick this frog. Uh, so it secretes uh, a hallucinogenic substance called 5-MeO-DMT, or DMT for short. Uh, supposedly the most potent psychedelic known to humankind. While the secretions can lead to a trip, the National Capital Poison Center notes it can also cause severe irritation, pain, and tissue damage. A lick or two can cause numbness of the mouth and throat, as well as severe and life-threatening effects to the heart. And people are doing it anyways. The agency warns these effects include a regular rhythm of the heart, heart block, reduced blood pressure, and cardiac arrest. So really, if you want to have a heart attack, you have one of two options, depending on where you're at. Shovel snow in Buffalo or lick a toad in near the Colorado River. It actually doesn't say which national parks. Uh, near the Sonoran Desert, somewhere, you know, wherever that is. If you want to die that way, have a heart attack, one of those two things. Those are your options. Um, the agency warns the effects, uh, I just read that. These severe effects can also occur after absorption through the skin. So you don't even have to go as far as lick it. You just have to touch it and you could die or get high or both. I mean, they say people have done DMT, that it's kind of like meeting God, like you completely leave your body, you leave this world, you see these, these creatures, uh, these godly creatures, what, I haven't done it, so I don't know. Um, but you don't even have to lick it, you just got to touch it. Uh, NPR notes that many toad users aren't actually licking the creatures, oh, okay, but smoking the secretions. Yeah, so they're just taking a bowl and just packing it with this toad or this frog. It's a toad packing it with the toad and just lighten it up. Uh, the toad is now considered threatened. Oh, here we go. In New Mexico, due in part to over collecting by people seeking those mind altering secretions. It's always a fun word. Uh, so I, I think I've actually seen this process. So they take the toad and it secretes this white goo uh, off of its back. And so they, they like squeeze the toad. And I think the video I saw, I should have pulled this up. I think the video I saw, they had gloves on and they'd squeeze it. And then it'd kind of jizz out some DNT, DMT juice onto the screen. And then they would let the screen or the juice on the screen dry. And then once it was dry, I think that's all they did. And then they kind of broke it up. Um, cause it got all crusty and then they smoked it and they got the DMT. Uh, but still someone says, Hey, if you lick this toad, you get really high. Other people are going to do it again. We all pay taxes. 
Uh, boxing great Mike Tyson is among the Toad's aficionados. Uh, the told, Toad's whole purpose is to reach your highest potential, he told the New York Post last year, saying he first tried it as a dare when he was a wreck, but has since improved. So Mike Tyson just down on his luck. Someone told him to lick a toad and he did. And now he's like, oh, no, yeah, I was in a bad spot. But what I walked away from that is you should lick these toads. They're awesome. Well, yeah, I don't know. Let me know, actually, um, in the hotline, 818-275-SWAY. If uh, a few a few elements of this, if you've tried DMT, call in. If you've tried DMT from this toad secretions, call in. Or if you've tried by smoking it, pardon me. Or if you've tried DMT through these toad secretions by licking it, I'd like to know a little more. Now, let's uh, move on to the next story, which is the wild news. Oh, dude, that's some wild news. Indiana cop visits school to teach kids how to be good police, then accidentally shoots one of them. <laughs> yeah. The shooting occurred during a visit to the school on Thursday morning in which the officer was running a drill with students on how police handle a purported, quote unquote, bad guy. I don't know what this drill entails, but someone got shot. It was at this point that the officer's weapon accidentally discharged and resulted in the injury of one student uh, who was not severely hurt. The incident was an accidental discharge of a firearm by a law enforcement officer during a drill. The school said in a prepared statement, one student was injured without th life-threatening injuries and has been taken to the hospital. The school has since resumed normal operations. Now, going back to this drill. So cop shows up. I mean, pretty commonplace. I mean, I had one when I was younger in school. We had our school resource officer. Uh, I don't really know what they did aside from being there. This was also in junior high, middle school. So, uh, I don't know if they're trying to keep the peace of just unruly sugared out preteens or what. Uh, and I went to a few of the like after school clubs. Um, we never had a drill though of like, all right, kids, I'm going to show you how to shoot a suspect multiple times. I mean, this is maybe a miracle that the student only got shot once because some of the body cam videos that I've seen, I'm sure you've seen them as well. It's not just one pop off. It is empty the magazine, reload and empty it again. But this drill, like what the cops like, all right, kids, I'm going to show you how to be a good cop. And by good cop, I mean a good shot. All right, everyone uh, go ahead and line up there on the other side of the room. I'm going to stand here with my gun on my hip. Oh, I have a little hip itch here. Now I'll taste it later. Gun on my hip. Now we're going to start. I'm going to show you. What I'm going to do if any of you were trying to attack me. So we're going to line up here. Uh, son, if you want to want to start <clears throat> on three, when I say go, you're just going to run at me. You're going to try. You're going to try and attack me. Uh, and I'll show you what a, a what a good cop would do. OK, one, two, three, go. I guess the kid starts running at him and he back up, back up, back up. Like it just goes like Vietnam flashbacks like he's. I mean, he is on the clock, but it's a student. It's not someone that's going to hurt him. <laughs> and he just, whoa, 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 back up, back up. What are you doing? What are you doing? Takes out his gun and pops off a shot. I don't know. I don't know how this all went down, but it did. Uh, so if you're wondering what it takes to be a good cop, really just be a good shot. Uh, have that gun pop off. You know, whenever you feel even slightly irritated, I guess maybe the kids were just as they were lining up before doing this drill, they're just kind of, you know, they're excited. They're like, Ooh, we, we get to see like a gun. It's like a cop. Ooh, cool. Uh, and then, you know, there are two kids just farting around and he, and he's kind of waving his gun around like this is a nine millimeter semi-automatic handgun. Uh, with hollow point ammunition, and this is our this is my favorite tool on the force. And then he kind of points it over to the kids. Hey, quit quit farting around, like waving the gun, and then pop pop, or just just one shot, pop. Oh shit! And the kid gets shot. I I don't know. There's a lot of mystery 
to this whole report. But just remember, good news is uh, the kid wasn't severely hurt. He did take a bullet, though, which it might seem shitty now. But him and his family is going to get a fat settlement from the police, the county, the city, whatever. So take a bullet, get paid. Why not? That's a good cop for you. And that's pretty much going to do it for the show this week. But as I said at the top of the show, we can't break the tradition of praying to the almighty algorithm. So at this time, um, if you want to bow your head, you can. Uh, you don't have to. I do because, uh, <laughs> come on, it's the almighty algorithm. So let us pray. Oh, almighty algorithm. Here we are at the end of another parade, but still the beginning of your power. We ask that you take this show with the country strong Spider-Man, cop shooting kids, and an itchy, pussy, infested, tasty hip itch. And take it. Spread it. Across the world. And across the universe. Onto infinity. Amen. Okay, well. That does it for our show this week. Thank you so much for watching and listening and getting through me trying to heave. Hopefully you were able to keep down whatever you had down uh, if you did watch it. I do want to give another final shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyler Parade Plus supporters. You can check out that Patreon, sign up, get some perks as well, help out the show. That's pretty much it. I will see you next week. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, if you got to shovel snow, be careful, get that cardio in check, smoke cigarettes when you run marathons, all of that. All right. See you now. Later. Gator. Gator.